What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have some stuff starting to pop off in the Atlantic. We have subtropical storm Don going on. But before we get into what I want to talk about, I want to briefly talk about Hurricane Calvin as it now poses a threat to Hawaii. So we're going to go ahead and briefly talk about this real quickly. Here's the latest public advisory. Winds are at 100 miles per hour. It is moving west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. Minimum central pressure is 975 millibars. Its current location is uh, is 14.7 degrees north, 129 degrees west. And hurricane force winds extend out 35 miles from the center. And tropical storm force winds currently extend out 25 miles from the center. So that's what we got going on right here. Here's the latest from the cone right here. Actually, if we can pull up the cone right here, we can pull that up. The cone has this as a hurricane until t- until tomorrow, and then it's rapidly weakening after that as it's approaching the cooler waters around Hawaii. It is, as of the, according to the NHC, expected to hit as a minimal tropical storm on the Big Island over here before dissipating into a post-tropical cyclone as it moves west of the, of the island chain right here. So that's what we got going on right there. I would not be surprised if tropical storm watches go out starting tomorrow, especially for the Big Island if you are in Hawaii watching this. Now we're going to go ahead and get on to the big stuff. We have subtropical storm Don. Latest on the public advisory has this at 45 miles per hour. Minimum central pressure is 1,006 millibars. We're going to go ahead and pull that up. It's moving, It's sorry, winds of 40 miles per hour extend outward 175 miles from the center. It is moving northwest at 9 miles per hour. It should turn towards the north later today and then towards the east Sunday and then to the south by Tuesday. So that's the situation we have for subtropical storm Don. It is expected to maintain its intensity at least for the, for the next five days. It could dissipate, though, at any time considering how disorganized it is right now. So with that being with that being said, we got this going on right here. We have a tropical wave going on right here in the Atlantic. We are expecting another tropical wave to come off the coast of Africa in the next couple of days, and that is something I am keeping an eye on, and we'll get to why in just a second. But first, we need to take a look at the global sea temperatures. The global sea temperatures have continued to increase. This is the latest for today or yesterday, July 14th. 30 degrees Celsius across the Gulf of Mexico, across the Northern Caribbean, across parts of the Atlantic, parts all over the Bahamas, about 20, about 32 degrees Celsius in parts of Cuba, the Bahamas, and the Florida Keys. Those temperatures continue to ramp up in, in strength right there. We're looking at a nice area of around 33 degrees Celsius waters off the coast of the Florida Keys, once again, due to that heat wave that's impacting southern Florida right there. Once again, record temperatures, record OHC as well. We now have four distinct areas of OHC over 175 or greater. We have this small area in the Gulf of Mexico. We have these, two, this one in the, off the Cuba, southern Cuba. We have this one over here, and we have this one off the coast of Jamaica over here. So this is record OHC. How far this extends, especially across the MDR and just the Central Atlantic, is absolutely ridiculous if you look at this, especially compared to 2020, where it didn't even extend this far until like late August, early September. That's how crazy this is. That's how crazy these waters have been. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the shear right here. Wind shear, especially across the eastern Caribbean, is very stubborn, around 50 to 60 knots in some areas. But the MDR is pretty much primed for development, once again, at least in this part of it over here. Gulf of Mexico continues to fluctuate. Central Atlantic, subtropical Atlantic has a low wind shear, so that's interesting to take a look at. And this shear is going to continue to fluctuate, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see this right here... We're going to go ahead and show you the Europeans' shear, shear run right here, and then we'll show you the moisture component to this. As you see, you're going to see this whole blob of shear remain quite stubborn in the Caribbean Sea, but you're going to see a lot of fluctuation in the MDR, a lot of fluctuation in the Gulf, a lot of fluctuation in the subtropical Atlantic, so definitely something to keep an eye on. You see that fluctuation. The shear does increase for about a day, and then it starts retracting. A little bit and it continues on and on like this for a while although we do have something going on right here 
we have this vorticity ring right here that it could be indicative of a potential tropical storm approaching the Lesser Antilles right there. And I've been keeping an eye on the ensemble runs, and we'll get to those in just a second. And they're calling for something else happening, which is potentially even stronger than that. This goes out to 10 days, and, before, and as it's entering the Caribbean, the shear will start tearing that apart if that is the case right there. So it's that vorticity ring that I am paying attention to. Now we're going to go ahead and go to the moisture component because you need moisture for a tropical development, especially right now as of right yeah, as of right now, the MDR is not very primed for development. There are a couple of slots of moist air going on, but that's going to clear out over the next few days. It's going to get down to moderate dry air, moderate moisture right there. We're at about 84 hours, and across the MDR, we have a very large, very consistent area of moist air. It's about uh, 1 to 200 miles across right there. And then we have some stuff starting to fire uh, up. We have this massive blob of moisture that's moving through the MDR before the moist air starts closing off. The Sahara dust closes that, close that off. But then you have this massive burst of moisture right here starting to basically push through the dust and just bake it through. That's that similar situation I was talking to you about earlier, that similar vorticity ring over there. And now we're going to go ahead and show you the European ensemble runs. Basically, we have Don up here, but this is about four days out, 96 hours out. And according to the European ensembles, we're starting to see some potential development over here, some ensembles showing potential development. It starts off very, very slow right here. However, as time continues to go on, it does start to intensify, and some of them start showing tropical storm characteristics about eight days out, and then you start seeing more and more intensification going on. And I'd say by about 10 days out, you start seeing some more hurricane scenarios, especially as they start entering the Eastern Caribbean, according to the latest from the European right here. However, I'm not too inclined to trust that too many of these are going to strengthen the Eastern Caribbean. Once again, due to that wind shear component that is going on right there. But things are looking interesting, and there are some implications, according to the European, that this could impact Cuba, the Bahamas, and even the United States, especially in Florida. And some have it entering the Gulf, some have it hitting Mexico right there. So basically, by about 14 days out, by about two weeks out, the European is calling for a lot of these scenarios of tropical storm to hurricane strength situations right here, some of which could impact Florida, some could impact Cuba, the Greater Antilles, especially the Dominican Republic, as I've seen several scenarios of that going on. So definitely something to keep an eye on for the next two weeks or so. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensembles. So this is what we got, and the Zero Z is pretty interesting for the GFS. It has it on a little bit, the European on steroids a little bit, and it does have a couple of hurricanes hitting the Caribbean Sea. I'm not too inclined to trust that, primarily due to that wind shear component. So unless that shear weakens considerably down to like maybe 20 to 30 knots, I don't see a scenario of these these happening. But anything until the Lesser Antilles is certainly possible due to the low wind shear, due to the moist air, due to the war very, very warm waters in the MDR. So that's what we got for the G the GFS Ensemble, at least the Zero Z that we got going on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GP, uh, GEPS Ensembles. And they're showing something similar too, but not nearly as strong. They're showing potential development starting in the next four days or so. But well, they are keeping it mainly to the east, and if it does end up approaching the Lesser Antilles. It is showing more tropical storm st systems, st tropical storm strength right there. So definitely something to keep an eye on right there for the GPS. They are also calling for some hurt potential large systems across Nicaragua, Honduras. We'll have to keep an eye on that as time continues to progress. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, my birthday is coming up on Monday, so if uh, the only birthday gift I want from you guys is to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That would very much make my day. If we could get up to 2,700 subs by my birthday, that would be mean the world to me. We're so close. We're getting there. I know you guys can do it. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.